All right, hello class. I'm recording live in my backyard because it is sunny out and beautiful. And as we head into this finals week, I hope you all get to enjoy a little bit of time outside. So today I'm gonna be going over the final exam review. Friendly reminder, I am collecting the final exam review. So you do need to have that submitted to me um, before the end of the semester. Um, I am gonna be going over it as well. Um, but I hope you will have attempted it by yourself first, right? So you can see where you've made mistakes and um, where you still have areas where you can improve your knowledge. So let's take a look at the first two questions. So the first two questions are, identify at least two uses of mathematics learned in this class to the real world. Okay, and you need to use complete sentences and at least two different examples. This is going to be a answer where a lot of different answers are accepted. It depends on you and your major. Are you social work? Are you dietetics? It also depends on what um, did you find the most interesting? Did you find proving things statistically significant using the normal curve? Did you really like how to design experiments and surveys? This is a chance for you to let me know. Next, it's gonna see how do you foresee using mathematics in your future professional and recreational endeavors, okay? You can't say I'm not, right? We're all gonna end up using math, even if it's more than we'd like to um, in our future lives, right? Whether or not I need to build a deck and I have to calculate how much wood I'm gonna have, or I wanna survey my coworkers to know um, whether they're satisfied with their employment conditions, right? Big corporations do this all the time. So be sure to put in a couple different examples and make sure they're thoughtful. Um, I really like to see how, where you can make connections between our material to the real world. The next thing I want you to know is that um, for this problem, the following statements are false, right? I'm telling you that right from the get-go. The following statements are all false and you need to correct each statement and make it a true statement. Okay, you can't just negate the station, the statement to make it true. You know, if you said the statement was false and it'd be Miss Miller does not have red hair, you can't just say Miss Miller has red hair. That's not the type of, that's what I mean by negation. So let's talk about this. Mean is a vet measure of variation. There's two ways we could correct this. Let's think about the words we recognize in our vocabulary. Those words are mean and variation. So I can either replace mean or I can replace variation. It's up to me. So mean is not a measure of variation. Do you remember what it is a measure of? Center. So option one would be mean is a measure of center. Okay, let's say, what if I didn't want to change mean? What if I wanted to change, sorry, what if I didn't want to change variation? And what if I wanted to change mean? Well, what's a measure of variation? There's a couple, right? There's range, there's standard deviation. I would accept either of those. Let's do standard deviation. Standard deviation is a measure of variation. So that would be two ways to correct this first statement and make it true. Next, let's take a look at our second problem. For a situation having a mean of 77 and a standard deviation of nine, the values that separate the unusual values from the ones that are usual are 68 and 84. Okay, so we know the majority of values, 95% of our data, is within the first two standard deviations of our mean. That's what we're gonna call usual data. Anything out of that is outliers. So usual data um, is within two standard deviations of our mean. Now, 68 and 84 mark the first standard deviation. So I need to know what values mark the second standard deviation. I do that by subtracting nine from 68 and adding nine to 84, right? That gets me um, plus two standard deviations, which is 
93 and minus 2 standard deviations which is 59. So I could correct this to be the two user values are, um, we're going to correct this and replace 68 and 84 with 59 and 93. So let's take a look at example three. Change my color again. When drawing one card from a standard deck of cards, the probability of drawing a heart is 4.52 seconds. So there's two ways we could replace this. We could replace this fraction here, and what is the probability of drawing a heart, or I could replace the card we're drawing, okay? So there's two ways I could do this. I could say the probability of drawing, um, what is there four of in a deck? Well, there's four of a lot of things. There's four aces, four eights, for kings, for kings, I could say the probability of drawing a king is 450 halves, sorry, 450 seconds. Or what if I didn't want to change heart? The probability of drawing a heart is how many hearts are there in a deck of cards? They're 13. They're 13. So you can again change this in whichever way you like. These are going to be fill in the blanks on the online exam. Next, when performing a hypothesis test, if the p-value is greater than or equal to alpha, the conclusion should be to reject H0. Okay, what do we look at? We look at reject, we've got p-value greater than alpha. There's two ways to change this, right? If I have a p-value greater than or equal to alpha, I actually do not reject h not right? We want a tiny, tiny p-value. So that's if I wanted to not mess with this inequality right here. I could also say if I have a p-value less than alpha, I don't know why I just wrote an infinity sign. That's not quite right. Okay, now it looks like an alpha. P-value less than alpha, I could reject my h not. So there's multiple ways to change these statements, that's just one thing I wanted you to notice. Next, proportions are used in a hypothesis test when the event under study has more than two possible outcomes. Proportions, remember, like population of people who like chocolate ice cream and the population of people who don't like chocolate ice cream. I don't know why I'm thinking of ice cream, guys. But... Proportions are only used when there are exactly two possible outcomes, right? It's like yes, no, male, female, right? There's only two possible outcomes, and that's when you're going to use proportions. All right, so that was our first problem on the exam. Next, let's go ahead and look at problem so, the following list of data represent the number of pages you printed per week during an eight-week period. The units are pages. So, I printed 17, 20, 27, 22, 31, 11, 21, and 20. Okay? I want you to determine the mean by hand and show all of your work. So, how do we calculate the mean? Well, the mean is also called the average. So, what I would want to do is I'd want to add up all of my pages. So, I have 17 plus 20 plus 27 plus 22 plus 31 plus 11 plus 21 plus 20 oh my gosh out of how many times how many different pieces of data do I have one two three four five six seven eight and if I add that all up I find an average of 21.125 pages next I want to find my median my median is the middle value. So in order to do that, I need to put my data in order from smallest to largest. So I have 11, 17, and this is stuff we did right at the beginning of the semester. So I just want to make sure we have a little refresher, but I'm sure you guys remember all of this. Okay, so I've got eight. I have eight pieces of data. So because that, I have an even number. So the mean is going to be right here. I'm going to take both of these. My two middle terms, add them together and divide by 2. So my median is 20.5. 
The next thing I need to find is the mode. The mode is the piece of data that occurs the most, the value that occurs the most. So how many multiples do I have? Well, I have two 20s, and that's the only value that occurs more than once. So 20 is my mode. Last but not least, with this data set, I want us to estimate our standard deviation, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna take our range divided by four. So that's gonna be 31 minus 11, right? My smallest piece, of, my largest piece of data minus my smallest, divided by four. Well, that gives me Oh, I think I calculated this wrong when I was making the note sheet. I will have to fix that. So this gives me 20 divided by 4, which is 5. Okay, so I will be sure and update that in the exam review key.